Hello, team. I'm Dr. Fox. Today, I'm talking about stillbirth. A baby is stillborn if she dies inside the mother anytime after 22 weeks in pregnancy in Japan, so in the second or third trimester. Usually, this happens before a woman goes into labor, but occasionally it happens during labor and birth. Doctors still don't know why some women are more likely to have stillborn babies than others. Although, we do know that stillbirth can happen in any family. That said, some mothers have more risk factors than others. Knowing about them may help you carry your baby to time. So, who is most at risk? The risk factors we know about include general health conditions and habits, environment, health darling pregnancy, previous history of pregnancies and your age, race, and social background. As regards the first of these categories, general health conditions and habits, you are more at risk of having a stillborn baby if you are obese or you have diabetes or high blood pressure. Being obese means you are barely overweight, with a body mass index or BMI of 30 or more. If you have diabetes, there is too much sugar called glucose in your blood, and if you have high blood pressure, it means your heart has to work harder to pump the blood away from your heart to other parts of your body. The next set of risk factors are related to pregnancy rather than general health. These include being pregnant with multiples, such as twins, triplets, or more, or having intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy or ICP, which is a liver condition that can develop while you are pregnant. You are also likely to be at greater risk if you have already had complications during an earlier pregnancy, such as premature birth before 37 weeks, preeclampsia or high blood pressure, or fatal growth restriction when the baby doesn't put on enough weight in the womb. Lastly, the risk could be greater if you have never given birth or you have already had a miscarriage or stillbirth. In the social and racial category of risks, if you are married, under 20 or over 35, you are more at risk. If you smoke, drink alcohol, and take street drugs or prescription painkillers such as opioids, you are more at risk and stillbirth is more likely to happen to black women than women of other races. Lastly, it looks as if women who live in areas where there is a higher level of ozone pollution may be more at risk. Ozone comes from high exhaust and the fumes produced by factories and chemicals, and it's still not clear how exactly it affects pregnancy outcomes. Okay, you may wonder, can stillbirths be prevented? My answer is that not every stillbirth can be prevented. However, there are some important things you should do to reduce the risk. First, make sure you attend every one of your antenatal appointments. Some of the tests and measurements have to be carried out at specific times and if you are not there, the doctors and midwives can spot any potential problems and take steps to help you and your baby. A good diet and plenty of exercise will have a real impact on your health and your baby's health. Being overweight is a risk factor for stillbirth and so is smoking. There are a lot of help available from health professionals for pregnant women to give up cigarettes, and your midwife, doctor, or local pharmacist can all give you information on stop smoking programs. And remember, even if you give up smoking, your baby can be harmed by secondhand smoke or passive smoking, so having other people in your house who smoke can also be dangerous. Second, don't drink alcohol. Again, medical staff can give you help with this if you are finding it difficult. Make sure your midwife knows about any history of drug use, as the more she knows, the better she can look after you. All information is confidential, and there's no judgment. Medical staff are just concerned to do the best thing for you and your baby. Next, have a full job. You can get this done at health facilities from the beginning of October each year. If you get the flu while you are pregnant, you are more likely than normal to get complications such as bronchitis and pneumonia, which can harm your baby. 
Getting a jam also means your baby will be protected in the first few months of her life. Don't spend time with people who are ill, especially those with infectious diseases such as diarrhea, vomiting, chicken pox, or parvovirus. If you find out that someone you've been with have an infectious illness, let your midwife or doctor know as soon as possible. Okay, then take basic hygiene precautions. In particular, wash your hands frequently and especially before preparing food after you have been to the toilet and if you have children already after changing nappies. Make sure all food is properly stored and refrigerated so it doesn't go off and stay away from foods which can cause listeria and salmonella, including raw or undercooked meat, certain cheeses, and unpasteurized milk. And lastly, after you reach 28 weeks, try to sleep on your side and not your back as it seems this allows more blood and oxygen to reach your baby and keep her healthy. If you wake up on your bug, don't worry, just turn on to your side to go back to sleep. Okay, question. What should you do if you think something is wrong? There are some situations in which you have to talk to a doctor or midwife immediately, not the next day, but straight away, even if it's the early hours of the morning. Don't wait. If your baby had stopped moving or is moving less than usual, you need to get her movements and heartbeat checked as soon as possible. Don't try and use a home monitoring kit or Doppler as it's not reliable, even if it shows a heartbeat. This doesn't mean your baby is okay. Equally, you have to get immediate advice if you start bleeding from your vagina or there is some sort of unusual vaginal discharge, which might be watery, clear or colored, as this could indicate an infection or that your waters have started to break. You also need to contact a doctor or midwife immediately if you experience anything that could be a sign of preeclampsia. This condition is usually mild, but not in all cases, so if you have any obvious swelling, particularly in the hands, face or upper body, or if you have a very bad and persistent headache, especially if you are vomiting at the same time, call the doctor. Also, if you are having problems with your vision or you can't focus, if you have a severe headache or you feel a pain just below the ribs, in the middle of your abdomen, these are all possible signs and you must get medical advice immediately. Lastly, if you start itching, particularly on your hands and feet, let your midwife or doctor know. It might be just a normal itch, but it might also be a sign of ICP, which you need to get treated straight away. Okay, thank you for watching. See you soon.